Jean Chrétien served three consecutive majority terms as the leader of our country. In fact, this month marks the 25th anniversary since he first took the helm as Prime Minister. Now, long after walking out of 24 Sussex Drive for the last time, he's inviting writers in with a collection of essays highlighting history with his trademark humor. The Right Honourable Jean Chrétien is here this morning with My Stories, My Times. Welcome to your morning. Nice to be with you. Yeah, good to have you here. Uh, I have to tell you, I read this book and laughed out loud many times. It was great to hear the behind-the-scenes stories to some of the most famous pictures in Canadian political history. Why was now the time to write the book? You know, what happened is, you know, when I'm having a good dinner with my grandchildren and so on, they keep asking me questions and I talk about all sorts of things. And one of them told me one day, he said, Grandpapa, that these things will disappear. A lot of funny incidents. You mm -hmm. know, you told me that uh, you laugh a bit. So he said, you should write it down for us. And I started for the fun of it. And as I say, you know, when I was uh, tired of the nonsense of <laughs> Donald Trump, I would go to my table with my pen and my souvenir and gain back my serenity. And that led to me last year to uh, write uh, 50 essays. And, uh, you know, it was between 600 words and uh, 400, uh, 4,000 words mm -hmm. that uh, I wrote. And eventually that there was enough to make a book. You mentioned Donald Trump. You have a chapter called Trump and the Russians. In your opinion, uh, did Vladimir Putin interfere with the U.S. election? But Trump was asking them to do so. You remember? He said, like, if you have more, send it to us. And, you know, so... He did, said they obliged necessarily, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that uh, yeah, they, they, they must uh, have done some of these uh, ads that seems to be. Now, with the new communication, there is tricks that did not exist in our time. Twitter and so forth. And Twitters and so on. So uh, I'm sure that they, they have used it, uh, you know, to try to influence the election. You don't hold back in this book, and it's great. So you Why should I? You, why should you is right. So I'm going to ask you, why should you? What is your impression of Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin, and Kim Jong-un? But I don't know the latter, you know, but uh, I know uh, Vladimir Putin because he was a president when I was prime minister. He's a very intelligent guy, but a tough guy. And he, and he's a, he has a very tough job because to run uh, Russia must be extremely difficult. Because in Russia, you know, the had a kind of democracy, and they introduced uh, at the same time uh, the economic reform, while the Chinese kept the communist system and they became somewhat capitalist. So the Chinese were more successful than the Russians, and it's extremely, probably very difficult to be the president of Russia. But uh, Vladimir seems to be quite popular there, and you know, and he's doing probably what he think is good for him and his country. There's a line you refer to Trump and uh, Kim Jong Un as two daddy's boys when they've looked. But they are, don't they? You Why know, do you say both that? are. You know, one became the president because his grandfather was the president, his father was president, and he became the president. And apparently, uh, Trump's father gave him uh, something like four hundred and seventy-five million dollars. <laughs> Not a bad way to start in life. Uh, you also write about using humor as a political weapon. Yeah. Could you use the same weapons in politics today? The same. I, oh, I think so. Yes, people want to to laugh, and uh, they will. You know, if you have it, telling the truth cold, it's sometimes difficult to swallow, to for the one the receiving end. But if you wrapped it with some humor, they can accept it in a in a different fashion. And I use it all my career. Apparently, I have a little talent for that, and. Uh, so it's reflected, apparently, in the book. Uh, you are also one of the Queen's favorite people. I have read this elsewhere, not in your book. Uh, and there's a great story in here of you singing O Canada for the Queen. This has become part of royal folklore. You did it in French. What happened is, it was a centennial of the Northwestern race, and she was in Fort Providence, one veil, a monument for Mackenzie, who discovered the Mackenzie River. And there was 3,000 people there. And the master of ceremony was supposed to go to the put to the mic to sing O Canada, but he was, um, you know, the Queen was there, Prince Philip, Prince Charles, and Princess Anne. He was too shy. He turned to me and he said, "I cannot do it." So I went there and, I, I, you know, and I that time I didn't know all the words in the Canada in English, so I started to sing in French, and nobody came along. So imagine, <laughs> you know, I being the royals, the, the, you know, to be 
singing in front of the royal family in 3000 people and nobody came along and I have a terrible voice you know singing and uh, you know I was sweating my wife said she had been uh, never had been so shy in her lifetime and and the queen laughed and eventually as I wrote you know Prince Charles told me a year later he said Mr. Christian this is now part of the royal folklore and uh, you know it is a good souvenir uh, you mentioned your wife Eileen uh, you yeah. also call her your rock of Gibraltar she, oh yes what does she think of this book Oh, she likes it. You know, she read, uh, when I was writing these stories, she would read them and give me advice. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, she, uh, you know, we're married since 61 years, and I know her since 66 years. So she knew me pretty well, and, and she was there, you know, and she was good at telling me the truth, you know, in a very nice way. Does she tell it with humor? Oh, yes, but, <laughs> yeah, of course, and, you know, she has been the partners of mine. And we, got, I was elected, I was 29, mm -hmm. and she was 27. And I was 40 years in Parliament or in public life. And I'm somewhat still part of a public life. So she used to it, and she would tell me the truth. Jean, you went too far. Uh, you were too long. Uh, you know, you should have been a more serious, or oh, you should have made that joke. And all. <laughs> so she was a, a great, uh, she's why, a great help to me. She's why I call her my Rock of Gibraltar. Uh, if you are a lover of Canadian history, if you're a lover of good humor, it is a great read. Thank you so much for coming in this morning. My pleasure to be with you this morning.